time I talk to you guys about my upcoming sewing plans for the next month, it really feels like I'm playing Russian roulette. And, you know, for the lack of a better term, really. And I'm being serious, not just because I'm Russian, if you didn't know that about me, but because out of, let's say, every 10 projects that I plan each month, um, nine out of them will turn out fantastic and I'll be so super proud and I will wear them and there will be a really good help in my wardrobe. And then that one, or maybe a few of them, if I'm just not that lucky that month, will really backfire so bad that it it will test my patience, it will test my problem-solving skills, and it will also flex my creativity in order to either toss the garment or maybe seeing if I can make it really work and save the fabric and save the garment and at the end of the day have a really nice pleasant experience in sewing. So today I'm going to talk to you about my upcoming plans for sewing for the month of August, share with you a few sewing fails that I'm going to be attempting to flex my creativity with. So let's get started. My dear sewing friend, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lisa, you're watching Thoughtful Creativity, and I wanna get started with the first sewing goodie for you, which I'm wearing, which is this cardigan. And if you've seen my July Sewing Makes video, you will know that this is a new make, free sewing pattern, as always. It's a Think Pink cardigan by one of the British sewing magazines. And I will leave that video at the end of this one, so that way, if you haven't seen it, it's super easy for you. At the end of this video, you're just gonna click on the icon, and it will direct you there. And underneath, I'm I'm also wearing a free pattern and it's no longer available unfortunately. I made this one like three or four, maybe five years ago. It's a tunic pattern by Spit Up and Stilettos and actually I'm so sad that they're no longer available because they had like a really nice array of free song patterns including pants. Uh, including a blazer and I never had a chance to download those you know when I was starting to sew um, I really stuck to a simpler patterns and that's the one that I downloaded but you know life is life and there's plenty of other goodies out there so my biggest project for the month of August is actually kind of magical and I and I really mean it so my family is finally visiting me uh, soon and I haven't seen them for almost five years I believe and we're all huge Harry Potter fans so I decided to make matching sweatshirts for all of us and there's five people plus the baby so five matching sweatshirts plus a little cute outfit for the little one and I am using this knit fabric from uh, Joann's and is the Marauders map from Harry Potter. And the reason why I chose this fabric is very simple. They did not have any other knit fabric in Harry Potter theme. And I've searched everywhere, fabric.com, I've searched on Etsy, I've searched on other sites and sources. And of course, I also wanted to stick to a you know certain budget. I didn't want to buy fabric that's like $30 per yard. So I really couldn't find anything better than than this. And I would love, I would love for, for my fabric to be something a little bit more, maybe black and white and gold, or maybe gray and burgundy for like Hogwarts but this will do as well I'll make sure it's magical uh, and to complement this fabric I actually had a fabric in my stash that I bought a few years back from fabric fabric.com and it's a really nice cotton jersey in this plum like wine plum uh, color and it's gonna go really really nice with this fabric together so my idea is to use the free pattern Frankie T a long sleeve and to do sleeves in this plum fabric and then to do the main body in this Harry Potter uh, print over here. So that's the main idea. I hope I have enough of this plum fabric uh, for all of the sleeves, all of the five of them. Uh, I should, and if I don't, I'll do my best to piece it together. So yes, five sweatshirts for the ladies. I'm going to be using Frankie T for gentlemen. I am not sure just yet. I have not looked for the patterns. I know Melly Sews has a free Raglan t-shirt pattern for men and I'll leave those in the info box below and I can always use that one and maybe just extend the sleeves. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a big deal at that point. Look at this gorgeous fabric print. Look at that. I got this fabric at Hobby Lobby. I got a yard. It's a cotton knit, stretch cotton knit, which is completely gorgeous. And let me tell you this, it has a very nice weight to it. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. And in my opinion, it's the perfect weight, at least for me, for a cardigan. So I got this print and I will be adjusting the cardigan that I made uh, 
out of this fabric as well, the one that I'm wearing. So I'm gonna be making a few little adjustments, just a tiny bit, uh, because I did crop the original pattern because I just realized that I like more of the cropped cardigan for like a blazer look. So there's a few little adjustments that I'm going to make, but overall, I'm gonna be making a cardigan out of this beautiful fabric. And uh, from the remnants, if I have something left, I'm gonna make the baby a beautiful little cute little t-shirt. Uh, the t-shirt pattern is going to be um, uh, Ringer T, uh, free pattern as well. I'm gonna leave the uh, links in the info box below. So I'm thinking about squeezing that out of one yard of fabric, so wish me luck. The next step in my August sewing plans is to fix the mess that I made last month. <laughs> Remember when I was talking about Russian roulette, right? So while I did have some really nice successful projects during the month of July, I also did have two major failures. Uh, why, you will ask? Well, because somebody here didn't think about the construction and I was just so in the zone of having a vision for a garment and just not really thinking about how this particular fabric behaves which is it's, it's very fluid very drapey it's one of those bamboo knits that i was telling you about in one of my videos i got it from fabric.com together with that plum fabric that i was showing you for harry potter sweatshirts i got it a few years back and um uh, really did not know how to work with this plus it really shows all your undergarments so i thought well i'm going to make myself a cardigan out of this right so i have a, a few tommy hilfiger cardigans that i really really love but because they were knitted they started to um deteriorate because I had them for so many years, like seriously, probably good five, six years. And I was fixing them up until the point when, you know what, there's, I just can't fix the garment anymore. It just unravels. So I took one of the cardigans apart. I took, I put put that down, traced the pattern around it. And that's what I was attempting to do right over here. Now I have a fix for it. I think I'm going to apply to the front of this to fix it. I think I'm gonna apply this pattern over here. I'm just gonna lay it on top and I'm gonna cut because this cardigan is featuring just a regular, regular, um, regular front. This cardigan features kind of like a rounded front, right? So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna apply this front to this cardigan. And then I'm gonna do my best to squeeze this little lapel over here out of the fabric that I have left, which is not that much at all. And if I don't have enough, I actually have a very similar color, actually almost tone and tone color that I, uh, from, of a fabric that I bought. Ooh, I'll tell you. Six, seven, six, maybe seven years ago at Abacan in Manchester in United Kingdom when I used to live there. And I remember the Abacan was in the fabric district, which is the historical district of the, of the town. And I bought two colors of this um, stretch satin. I bought this like coral red, and then I bought white. White I used uh, partially for my wedding dress. And then this coral one stayed in my stash for like forever now. So if I, for some reason, can't fix this mess, uh, with, with the fabric that I already have left over, then I'm probably gonna incorporate that fabric into this design and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I can flex, flex and stretch my creativity to the, to the point where I make something out of it. So time will show, right? Another unsuccessful mess that I made last month was again, exactly the same cardigan that I constructed and the poor judgment here uh, was <laughs> by using these two, co two, two fabrics together. Uh, I had a vision that this print would go really well with a solid fabric and because at first this print really looked a little bit more carpety, carpety for me, like, like a, like an accent rug. And I really wanted to break it, break it down. And guess what? It kind of looks even worse than that now. So I have two options. I can either take it apart and make a cardigan from the remaining blue parts, just add some, some of this blue material to make a full other cardigan out of it, and then use this blue 
fabric for something else or the option another option is just to finish it and wear it at home which uh, it's not a bad option but I just really don't like the combination of the two fabrics together this uh, this stretch uh, fabric over here which is the same content same company as for that floral print that you print that you saw also bought at Hobby Lobby 100% cotton uh, cotton knit and then this blue one, cotton knit, um, about a Durant's fabric. Each of them, I believe, in the range of like 10 to $13. And I always, always, always buy them on sale. So that way, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit easier on the wallet. Oh, and I also need some undies, but for that, I will probably scavenge my remnant bins that I have here in my sewing room. And the free pattern that I've used before is by Cloth Habit, if I am not mistaken. Again, I will leave that one in the info box below. It's a great pattern. I really love it. Uh, the elastic um, or fold over elastic that I actually don't fold over, and I will show you my method of, of making undies because I really don't have enough patience to which is really weird because when I sew actual full-size clothing, I have a lot of patience for beautiful details and I really want to make sure that it comes through, uh, you know, like the vision comes through. But when I do underwear, I just, I don't know, folding over that elastic is just so, I don't know, there's something about it that I just really can't sit through. So the fold over elastic that I don't fold over, I buy at Walmart, or at least I used to, uh, and it comes a dollar per one of those little uh, rolls, I guess, and you can uh, find them um, in a craft section, and there's so many different really nice uh, prints that you can get. So that's as for the fold over elastic, and then I have a nice little um, nice little way how I do the leg openings without the fold over elastic and I'll I'll talk about it in my August sewing mix video so if you want to see and hear about that definitely tune in at the end of the August for that and thank you so much for watching I really appreciate you guys more than you know really I truly truly am inspired by all of your support I strive to deliver great videos to you with lots of goodies in here every single time so I hope you subscribe I hope you like I hope you enjoy and share and until next time sew up a storm check out these videos over here and have an awesome awesome last month of the uh, of the summer thank you so much bye